Our next guest's work is arguably ground zero of the internet comedy revolution. He holds the writer's record at Mad Magazine, being in every issue for more than 45 years. A humor writer for The Match Game and other classic TV game shows, he has appeared regularly on GMA, Regis, and currently appears on ABC's World News Now. He hosts the popular podcast, The Gizwiz, on This Week in Tech. Mad's maddest writer, Dick DiBartolo. to turn that this way. Okay. Uh, I'll just give you a, a quick thing how I started at MAD, which was MAD. I was in high school reading MAD, uh, and then after a few issues, I thought, I want to read this. I want to write this. So I, I bought a book called The Writer's Yearbook, and MAD was in there, and it said MAD would read unsolicited scripts, but just send a self-addressed stamped envelope, because if it was rejected, you wouldn't get it back. So I wrote a script, uh, take off on commercial, sent it to him. Uh, six weeks later, I got back my own envelope, very depressed, and I threw it in my desk. And then later on, I thought, maybe it's one of those, it was almost good, or try again. So I opened the envelope, and it was stuffed with cardboard. And I took it out, and then the cardboard said, ha, 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 thought your script was rejected, <laughs> stapled to this cardboard <laughs> is a $100 check. This is back in the 60s. Uh, please call us. We, we want to talk to you about more work. Uh, so now I've been in every issue of MAD for 45 years. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to do a little history of MAD backstage, pick at MAD magazine. Again, graphics department at MAD, <laughs> three Mac computers to make this look like somebody just took a magic marker and... <laughs> All right, so MAD started out in 1952 as a 10-cent comic book. Uh, today, it's a $5.99 uh, magazine. Uh, okay, that's it. So, uh, question? <laughs> no. All right, so we'll do, a little, we'll do a little more. All right, so, uh, so MAD, the comic, really just satirized the comics. And after 23 issues, they thought, you know, we're out of comics. Let's just satirize everything. So Mad Comics became Mad Magazine. And then a year later, in 56, they did their first color cover. This is the back cover of that first color issue. Uh, at, the, at one time, we had 10 foreign editions of Mad. Now, the foreign editions are way further out than American Mad is. This is Netherlands issue, another issue from uh, one of our overseas uh, editions. The most famous cover we ever printed, the notebook cover. This is the cover of MAD. It was reproduced four times, and it was made so that you could just take MAD into school, and <laughs> y you didn't have to put it in anything because it already looked like so. Uh, MAD tries to stay very topical, so uh, when Apple Maps came out with their first version, which was all screwed up, uh, MAD came out looking uh, like the New Yorker, uh, and, and it's the New Yorker using Google Maps. So it's 9th <laughs> Avenue, Sea of Gallery, Mississippi River. Um, we also do a lot of posters at MAD, and, and our posters tend to look like the real poster. So this is my choking poster. Find out what the victim is choking on. Do not order that dish for yourself. <laughs> In 45 years, the first 45 years, no advertising. And I would talk to people, and they would say, no, I, I see ads in MAD all the time. Well, it's our satirical ads, which tend to hopefully look like the real ads. So when <laughs> KFC came out with the double down, uh, I came out with the triple bypass. <laughs> Uh, this is very big with the staff because we actually built the sandwiches in the office for the photos. Uh, so no one went to lunch that day. Uh, our biggest selling issue every year is the 20 dumbest. And it's the 20 dumbest things of the previous year. So in 2015, uh, we poke fun at, and, and again, we poke fun at, but we don't really antagonize people. So when Hillary Clinton was talking about <laughs> running out of money, she became the TV show One Broke Girl. And when Bridgegate uh, came, that turned into uh, Grand Shaft Auto. <laughs> now, one of the questions most asked from people in the industry, has MAD ever been sued? So this is my favorite story. So Star Wars comes out, the very first Star Wars, 
And three days later, a letter from Lucas's attorneys. This is infringement, using our characters, you're using our storyline. We want 18% of the profits. We want the original artwork. Well, what the lawyers didn't know was the day before their letter came, this letter came, uh, uh, there should be special Oscars for Mark Drucker and Dick DiBartolo for the satire. So back then, William Gaines, the founder and producer of the Mad, just took a magic marker and on the lawyer's letter wrote, gee, George liked it. <laughs> See the attached letter. And they sent Lucas's uh, letter along. And yes, <laughs> we, we never heard from them again. Um, so Mad is bi-monthly, but we have a very active website. And in that way, we can do reactions to things rather quickly, like the the uh, Paris uh, calamity in January. We were able to get that up right away. Uh, and then we're also on the iPad. And so that you, if you know MED and you know the fold-in, you do not have to fold your iPad and buy a new one every time. <laughs> OK, you can just uh, unfold and fold the fold-in with your finger. And MED does not advertise, OK? So fortunately, we get a lot of free publicity. This is back in the late. Uh, 1980s when we were on 60 Minutes uh, plugging MAD. A and Bill Gaines said that we picked up 25,000 subscribers from the 60 Minutes piece. So it was really great. A and the funny thing about Yuma is Molly Safer says, what's the hardest thing about putting MAD together? And I said, stapling it. <laughs> so everybody laughs. And it airs. And a week later, Acme Staple Company. Uh, we were watching a gentleman on the 60 Minutes program saying that it was very difficult to staple your magazine together. And we have stapled magazines thicker than mad. And if you call us, we can provide. I mean, the, it just went over the guy's head. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, fortunately, these days, uh, comedians and cars getting coffee. Jerry Seinfeld and Howard Stern spent about 15 minutes of one episode telling them how much they loved MAD. Howard Stern said, when I was growing up, I wanted to be one of the usual gang of idiots. So fortunately, MAD still stays in the news, even though we still don't advertise. We do take some ads, and it, there's a real uh, uh, answer for that, is MAD was always in black and white. We did one color issue, sold very well, but is incredibly expensive. So Time Warner, that owns MAD, said, you know what? If you just take like four ads, they'll pay for a color run because ads must be in color. And then you'll just get a free run. So we do have like four or five ads, real ads in an issue, but they pay for the color press. Uh, my MAD, MAD got me to do some other things. First of all, this was in 2011. I went to San Diego to do a, a MAD show. And it was the first time ever they invited me out, two tickets, all your expenses paid. And I did a, a little mad show. And it turned out that the surprise was that I would win an Inkpot Award, which is their lifetime achievement uh, in comic arts. Steven Spielberg won one also that year. And the reason I show Steven Spielberg's slide is I know when he talks about his award, <laughs> he shows the picture of me <laughs> holding mine, right? Don't you think? Don't you think that? Uh, so work, working at MAD got me another whole career. A friend of mine was working at Mark Goodson, Bill Todman Productions, and said, listen, we have a show called The Match Game, and we need someone to write questions. You want to come over and, and, and talk to Goodson about it? So I went over, and I if you know The Match Game, you may not know that the first year it was a totally different show. It was, the, the questions were, name a red flower. Name an animal you can eat. Name something that goes with eggs, OK? And it was a one-year contract. And 10 months in, Goodson called me in and said, listen, the show is canceled. There's two months of shows to go. But I just want you to know in, in two months, you'll be uh, out of work. So over the weekend, I was thinking about it. And on Monday, I went in. I said, hey, Mark, I have an idea. Instead of these dreary questions, you know, I work for MAD. I, I think in a kind of a silly way. How about instead of name a red flower, how about Mary liked to pour gravy on John's blank? OK, so Goodson laughed. And he said, well, oh, that's it's, well, it sounds funny. What will people say? I'll say they'll laugh. And then they'll say pot roast, mashed potatoes. He said, you know what? The show's canceled. They can cancel it twice. Just, <laughs> 
do what you want. So we started with the Weird Willie and, and all the politically incorrect things nowadays, Fat Frida. Um, a month later, Goodson called me in and said, they're picking up for another year. Uh, and all in all, Match Game ran 17 years. So I, I got a second career out of uh, the Match Game. And then um, I got Bill Gaines on To Tell the Truth, which is also a Bill Todman uh, production. And that got me another job because the producer of To Tell the Truth left, went over to Metro Media back then, before Fox took over. And she had a Saturday morning show. And she said, we have a cook, and, and we have a pet guy, and a garden guy. She said, but your office is full of weird gadgets. Would you show gadgets? And I said, uh, yeah, I, I will. And, and I tend to find the more offbeat gadgets. For example, TV hats, <laughs> OK? Th this, this is an honest-to-God gadget. So what you do is you click your smartphone onto it. Then there's a big magnifier that you slide back and forth in front of your <laughs> smartphone until it looks like you're watching a big movie. Then you take the two headphones that are in there and stick them in your ear and plug it into your phone. Then you drop your privacy curtain <laughs> so you don't look strange. Uh, so Anyway, I did show this on uh, World News Now and, and a lot of TV shows. And the following year, I, I, I had founded at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show. And, and the guy said he sold hundreds of thousands of them. I also found the uh, helicopter alarm clock. So <laughs> when the alarm clock goes off, it shoots the helicopter in the air, th that blade. Uh, you have to find the blade and put it back in the clock in order to shut the alarm. <laughs> OK? It is battery operated, but they put five screws in the battery compartment. So it's easy to, to find the blades. And so anyway, so that led to another whole career. So and fortunately, I could do them all at one time, right from Ed Magazine, be on television, and be finding gadgets. And uh, I ended up on World News Now showing gadgets, which I still do. And then I, then, uh, I was work on, a, on a show called Tech TV with Leo Laporte. And Tech TV went out of business, and Leo said, you know what? I'm going to start a tech channel for the internet. Let's just be on the internet and have no producers, and let the shows will be whatever the length they are. You have five gadgets you want to talk for five minutes, fine. You have five gadgets you want to talk for an hour and a half, fine. So he started Twit, This Week in Tech. And uh, I started a show called The Giz Whiz with Leo and did it for three years for free. And then we built an audience. We had 25,000 downloads of the show a day. So we had 125 downloads a week. And then we got sponsors. And then it turned it into another career of podcasting, which I'm still doing. Um, Mad got me to number one on my bucket list. I love old movies. I wanted desperately to be on Turner Classic Movies. <laughs> I wrote them a letter and said, could Mad's Maddest Writer come on, pick his four favorite satires, and then just explain the difference between a comedy and a satire. It took three years for everything to work out, but I got to host a night of uh, satires with Robert Osborne, uh, October uh, 2013. And we're doing one other weird thing. I am coming in at 57, I am doing this so well. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the next issue of Mad Magazine, guest editor Weird Al takes over. And about 10 blocks from here next Monday at this time, Weird Al and a lot of the mad guys are going to be at the Barnes & Noble, which I think is in this neighborhood. Uh, so there's a mad look at Mad Magazine. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you.